Welcome back to How to Sell Your House in Today's Market. This is the second part, so let's get started. So, the first part, we covered what's your why, three things to do before you list a home. Hire, do you hire a realtor? Or do, you, do you do it yourself? Steps to listing a home? Who's all involved in a sale? And what's going on in the current market and who's your competition? So if you haven't watched the first part, make sure you watch that before you watch this, please, so it all flows together. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with the first thing is today's buyers. Who are today's buyers? Are you going to be a buyer after you sell your home? If you are, I strongly suggest that you watch my home buyer workshop. Uh, if you want it, we can send it to you or you can uh, just follow, uh, subscribe and follow us. And it's right on our YouTube channel. But we keep those updated so they're current for the market. So again, if you're going to be a buyer after you sell, please make sure you watch that. It'll give you some real important uh, insights and some tips. Okay. Now with that, today's buyers. Today's buyers, I put them in the four categories. You've got serious in a hurry. You've got serious but not in a hurry. You've got investors and cash buyers, and you've got casual lookers. The casual lookers and the investors and cash buyers, uh, they're all looking. The, the casual lookers are tire kickers. They're just having fun. They're just looking. Investors and cash buyers are looking for a deal. You want to get as much money out of your home. Uh, someone who's got cash is going to try to work you to get a better deal. Uh, maybe you're interested in that. Uh, but in a good market, why would you if your house is priced right? So I wanted to share that. So we're talking about talking to the serious not in a hurry and the serious in a hurry. So people who are serious in a hurry, they're here. They might have been transferred here through their job. Whatever the case may be, they need to buy. Maybe they're renting. Their landlord has given, given them notification that it's time to find a play, new place to go rent because I'm selling the house. You want to buy it? They say no. They've got to start looking. They're serious. They're in a hurry. Now, the serious and not in a hurry, and there's tens of thousands of these people out there right now, doesn't mean they're not going to buy, but they're looking for a deal. They're looking for the right house. So we're focusing, and your agent should focus in on those two top categories. With that, where, do these, where are these buyers coming from? How do they find you? How do they find you? Well, 37%, you can see the percentages here. I don't have to read it, but they're going to come from real estate agents. They're going to come from the internet. They're going to come maybe driving by with yard signs. Neighbors are telling their friends, family members about it. 94% of the buyers that we see in today's market are coming from these areas. I think that's important. You can talk about the ones down below, but why waste our time? That is old, old, old ways of doing real estate. So top left is where we're targeting. Now, three things that sell a house. Let's talk about this. There are more than three things, but the three basics are price, condition, and location. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with price. So let's talk about how do you come up with price? Well, some of you might be looking at Redfin, Zillow, Trulia, whatever that's out there. Uh, maybe you're looking at what some of the neighbors have sold their houses for. And if their houses are just like yours, nothing wrong with that. But if you're a rambler and they're a two-story, there's a big difference. So yours might be worth more, might be worth less. I don't know. But you've got to compare an apple to an apple. And the size of the apples have to be the same. So I wanted to start with that. So there are some areas where you can get an idea of where your, where your house should be priced. One is what they call a comparable market analysis. Another is technical data. And another way of doing it is you can do it through an appraisal. So we're going to talk a little bit about a CMA. Um, I like doing this. I like doing it with my sellers so they can see exactly how it is and we're all working together with it. So ask your realtor to do it with you. And I, nothing wrong with that because your insights and ideas and thoughts are very important. And if you're getting shut down on that or basically feel as if you're being told, well, this is the way it is, uh, you should keep interviewing. How's that? All right. So a comparable market analysis, you can see here, uh, three, four bedroom, uh, two and a half bath. Square footage is the same. As you can see this as you follow along on the sold properties. You can see what the original price was. You can see the list price and you can see the sold price. So this is one way of coming up with the value of your home. This is just one. The next would be technical data. As you can see here, the technical data here is 
it goes, I, I use core logic. Okay. So one of the things I'll share with you is this shows the entire Northwest multiple listing service. Again, there are listing services throughout the United States, but ours that we use is the Northwest. When I say this to you, if you will look at it, you'll see on the left hand side, the number of homes you'll see on the bottom is the month and the year. Now the light green is what's for sale. The green, dark green is what is sold. And then you can see what's pending. So it's technical, it's technical information. And as we talked about yesterday, what type of a market are we currently in? I believe we're really, it says we're in a seller's market, but I'm, I believe because of in high interest rates, we're really in that neutral market. So again, technical data is important. Now, what I can do even with this is I can dial it in really tight. I can take your zip code of where your house is. I can take actually the four bedrooms, three baths that you have, and I can narrow it down in such detail to get an idea of how many days on market, what's the inventory, everything to be able to bring this to a potential seller so that they can see it. So you want to make sure you're asking these questions about having them show you technical uh, uh, information, technical data, so that you have a better idea of where you're at and do you want to sell your house at that price. I think it's important. Now let's go on. Let's say you've got a difficult property. You have a difficult property to uh, put a value on, get an appraisal. Spend the five to $800 to see if you want to sell your house. Because if you've got an appraisal, That'll put the stake in the ground right there. But typically, I don't see, I, I don't have a lot of sellers that have done this. I've had some that we've had to do it, but it's, it's a rare occasion. But keep that in mind. Keep it in mind. If you have doubt, this is one way to find out. All right? Now, let's go and continue. Pricing your home is so important because here's one of the things I want to share with you. Price, pricing your home correctly is going to equal to how many showings you're going to get. If you look at this pyramid, you'll notice where it says market value and you'll on the left and you'll see 60%. If there are 10 buyers that are looking for a house just like yours, pretty much 60% of those buyers, six out of 10 are going to come and walk through your house. If you overprice it, if you overprice it, you can see the percentages. It goes way, way down. This is so important that you see this. And the reason for it is it can hurt you. It can hurt your bottom line. That's why pricing is very, very important. Doesn't mean that you can't, you can't change it. But I see houses that are on the market for 30, 40, 50 days. And in this market, what's the one thing that buyers say when they see that? What's wrong with it? <laughs> what's you, wrong Jesse. with it? I'm sorry, I, I can't no, help that's myself. Great. No. Buy, yep, what's wrong with it? Buy, buyers are not not stupid. No, they're, they're not. They're, 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 I'm teaching them. I we, teach a whole yeah, exactly. workshop. You know, we I'm talked about the serious, about the not in a hurry, and the serious. They're on there. They're looking at these houses. They're seeing which ones are, are lingering. And I have clients that are actively searching that are, have their eyes on houses that are on there for 30, 40 days. They're just waiting for that price drop. Yep. They're waiting for that moment that the seller is finally willing to They're waiting for a seller engage. to bend their knee. Oh, yeah. Yep, you know? Absolutely. Hey, let's talk about this. Overpricing. So overpricing, it'll cost you. It'll really cost you. So let's say that you're dead set. Let's just say that the agent that you have is saying to you, we're looking at 730, 730. Or they say your price of your house is 500,000 and you're saying, no, I, I want 560. You'll have agents that say, oh, okay. They'll bend the knee and they'll do it. And then you are going, why isn't selling? Why am I not getting, why, are you, why aren't you doing your job? Well, that, that's not right. I'm telling you right now. And for some people who are watching this, you're like, well, oh, uh, my father was one that said, I'd rather burn the house down than to give it away. And I should have given him a book of matches. <laughs> the thing is, is that you've got to be realistic. We all think that what we own is worth more than what it is. But the reality is facts are facts. So overpricing can cost you. Let me tell you why. You don't want to be chasing the market. So someone who has their house on the market for a real long period of time that isn't lowering it, when they do lower, lower it, then they're chasing it. Because now people go, ah, here they go. Now they're desperate. Now you might be sitting there and say, well, I'm not desperate. Okay, well, you're not. But the fact is, is that you drop it 30,000 and now you start getting activity and people make an offer 
and they offer 10,000 less than that. What it, what you lowered it to, plus they want you to pay $10,000 of their closing cost. These are things that happen and you're going, wait a minute, what's going on? It's because it was overpriced from the get-go. People, most real estate agents don't want to speak to you or talk to you this way because they're afraid they, they need a sale so desperately because they don't do a lot of business. The fact of it is, is you need to hear the reality and the truth of it. Let's get it on the market. Let's get the maximum out of it. So if you do want to sell it for a higher thing, a higher price, I would say this. Okay, we're going to give it 10 days. We don't get the traffic. We don't get offers in in that period of time. And they're going, Mike, you think, you know, in this market, houses on this market are moving within 30 to 45 days. But if we haven't got traffic, we know it's price. If we've got condition and location and those are good, it's time to get moving because you're still carrying the mortgage, utilities, taxes, maintenance, the whole thing, and the house isn't going up in value, you're still paying. All right, enough of that. Let's move on. So condition and curb appeal. Okay, so here we go with this. I want you to know that within, I have 30 plus years, within 30 to 60 seconds of viewing your property, I will guarantee you a buyer has already decided if he or she are, if they're interested. You might be going, oh, come on, Mike. Well, first of all, a lot of the buyer's agents that are out there don't call your agent to get information about the house. Most real estate agents don't really know how to sell a home. They just see your listing, people have looked at the pictures, and now they've hired an agent to say, okay, let's go over and take a look at it. it happens all the time. And then again, your client, your, your agent is, doesn't answer the phone or whatever the case is, and they're trying to put all the information about your house into um, the listing, and it can't be done. They only allow so many words in it. So it's good to have that communication between your agent and the buyer's agent coming in, and you should insist that they're talking to an agent before they come into the home, just not booking appointments and let people roaming through your house. So I wanted to share this with you because this is so important. It isn't, Jess. I mean, oh, yeah. it, it's critical. And I've driven into homes where it looks, you know, the pictures look great. We pull up, and I'm looking at my clients in the other car, and they're going, let's go. I don't want to be here. So I'm telling you this because you need to hear it. You might think that beautiful pink house of yours is going to be really attractive, but it didn't look pink in the pictures. It looked brown, and then when they got there, they're going, whoa, are you kidding me? So you need to hear the reality of this, 30 to 60 seconds. Now, let's talk about pre-listing tasks, things that I should share with you. Some of you already might know, but I'm telling you right now, you put air wicks in your house thinking that this is going to uh, make people feel real comfortable. I am telling you that as soon as they smell those, what do they say? What do they say, Jess? Every time. What's wrong with it? What's, What's wrong? What, what are, are they hiding? To cover up. <laughs> so I'm sharing that with you. If you've got an odor in the house, treat it, get rid of it. All right? Declutter the house. People look at that. And if you throw everything into the garage, they're going to say, really? What is this telling us? They don't have any space in the house? You've got to put yourself in the shoes of a buyer. You need to co completely clean the inside and out. You've got, if, if you like dark walls and you've got dark floors, I mean, I walked in a house the other day and they must have gone to Home Depot. They've taken five gallons and mixed different colors with it and they painted the ceilings and the walls. Everything was the same color. It was nicely done, but I felt as if I was in the balls of a ship. I mean, you're everybody, even my clients are looking at me going, Wow. And then bad lighting on top of that. Guys, I, I need you to hear this because this if you want the maximum dollars, I'm not saying you have to repaint your house, but talk to your agent about it and ask them to be honest with you. That's the thing. Honesty. So if you need to repaint, repaint. Broken items, fix them, recock, bathroom fixtures, re you know, somebody opens up the shower curtain and it's yellow and it's dirty and it's like, what? And you want $600,000 for this place? This is what buyers say when you're not around. Wash the windows inside and out. Make it, a real, make it nice. If the blinds are crooked and all that, fix them. Put, a good, put your best foot forward. It doesn't cost that much. Make sure the roof is clean. If there's, you know, make sure. Now, this time of year, it's a little springtime and early summer. It's not that pretty out there, needless to say. 
doesn't matter. You can still make it look nice. You can make sure that you can add some beauty bark, you can weed, you can clean it up. First impressions, that's what it's about. Now, I'm going to offer you something. If you'd like it for free, let us know. Give us a call. Email us. I'll send you over a seller checklist. My 30 plus years, I put this together. It's a, pretty, it's a lot of detail, simple, but it kind of gives you an idea of what you should do. Now, before you do anything, talk to your agent about it because here's the thing. Do you really, is it really necessary to make home improvements? Not in all cases. It really truly isn't. And so a good agent's going to talk to you about that. You might say, well, we really need to remodel the kitchen. No, you don't. Price the house to sell without the remodel because you might put all that money into a remodel and never get it back. Hopefully that makes sense. You can do that with a lot of different things. So again, talk with your agent about this because it's so critical. But happy to send over that seller checklist to you, okay? Now, with that, proactive tips. Here's one thing I'm going to share with you. Selling is about relationship building. You, please be transparent with the buyer. It creates trust. Buyers are coming to your home. They're dealing with payment shock because of high interest rates. They don't have the extra money. And now all of a sudden they see your home and it might not be in the best condition or this or that. So there are red flags that are going up. And they're thinking to themselves, okay, so how can you do this? So it, depending on the year and the, the age of your home, but getting an inspection, a pre-inspection in your house really helps buyers. You can have a pre-inspection. It costs between $350 to $450. And if you have an older home, get a sewer scope done too. What you're doing is you're saying, here's my home. I want to sell it. I, I, I don't have the money to put into it. Maybe you don't. We're selling it as is. Here's the pre-inspection. These are the things that have come up. Now, I've had sellers say, well, I don't want to spend $350 to $450. Okay, maybe you should talk to another agent. Because to be real honest with you, it is going to be difficult. Because those type of a seller that, do, that, that will do that, a good agent is going to say, you don't need an inspection. But if the house does, get a pre-inspection. Because here's what happens. Even if there's problems... The buyer appreciates you being upfront and honest about it. And then they can decide on what they can or cannot do. It's transparency. Now, when I said that they don't have the extra money, what can you do? There are some tricks and tips that I have to be able to, let's say you need a new roof. Maybe you need new plumbing or electrical or a lot of different upgrades. There are ways to take care of that, to work with a buyer to where they can walk into your home and all those things can be taken care of. Now, I'm not going to get into the details on that. Watch, watch one of my other videos on that. You'll see them coming up and I'll have some tips uh, on how to do that and how to negotiate and put that together to where you get your price and the buyer gets what they want. And you, and you have not any money out of your pocket whatsoever. Now, there's one other thing you can do to help in negotiations in an inspection. You can actually offer a home warranty. And I want you to be careful with this. There are a lot of places out there that are offering warranties. I'm going to mention any names. If you want a good warranty to, to offer that, let me know and I'll give you the name and contact information for it because I did it before and you learn a lot in all the years after doing this. And I have had people that have gotten warranties, have made a claim, and have been denied. And these are big companies that are out there. I'll give you the ones that actually... You pay for a warranty, you've got a warranty. So I, you can tell I got a little edge in my tongue on that when I talk about it. Um, so again, home warranties can be a real great negotiating tool and they can run you anywhere from 390, 450. I've seen them as high as eight, $900 because of heat pumps, things like this, extra things that wanna be covered. So there you go. Jesse, any comments on that? I, I will say <clears throat> with the pre-inspection, it does help weed out some of the issues you might run into down the road say you get into contract and then they walk away you'll have much more serious buyers come to the table because you are willing to share that and be transparent with them which takes some of the what if out of the equation which i think great, is yes. great great thank you appreciate that so let's go into talk about staging staging it can be in the right house it can be done well now 
Today, some of the photography that's done now, they can the photographers can actually take a room and they can declutter it completely in the picture. And then what they can do, they can they can stage it. They can virtually stage it. Um, some of it's good, some of it's not. But a, a, a home that needs to be staged, and you can see here, 90% of the stage houses sell on an average of 29 days or less. So you can see this is actually one of ours where you can see the house on the, on the left. This is what it looked like. And after it was staged and cleaned up, that's what it looked like. So you can see the difference right there. So talk to your agent about staging, whether it's necessary. They can maybe use your things, but a stager can come in and guide you and really help you with this in no matter what price range. Okay. Now, location. This is something where the house is where it's at. <laughs> You're not going to pick it up and move it. But I will guarantee you that buyers are very aware of locations. They are looking, I, they're going to look at flood zones and the wetlands restrictions, power lines. I have clients just the other day, they're coming in from out of state. And I'm going to tell you, beautiful home, perfect. It clicked off all the boxes. Guess what was 40 feet off the back line? Power lines. And when you walk back there, you could hear them buzzing. And they said, nope. And we're looking at, and that was a, a house between six hundred and fifty to seven hundred thousand dollars. And they're going, no, we're not gonna pay that kind of money and have that. And it's as simple as that. Not much you can do. You're gonna have to price it to overcome that. I, I hate to talk that way, but it's it's the truth. Road noise, airplane noise, the streets, you know, you wanna go outside. Open up the back door. You, maybe you don't want to look at your neighbors. You don't want to listen to the barking dog. You know, you don't want to look look into the backyard of a junkyard or uh, there's railroads, just, bus railroads, lines, and then all no, that. everything. And sometimes it just breaks my heart to think. I understand everybody needs housing, but what were you thinking when you bought it? Were you under pressure or stress to make that? And I'm telling you, it's, these things are real serious. Not much you can do, but, you know, even CC&Rs, the codes, covenants, and restrictions. You know, what are the homeowners, what's your homeowners association like? Get that information up front to present it to buyers so that they can see it, all right? And what they're looking at, proximities to parks. They're looking at the schools. How are the schools there? Because people look at that, okay? Is there easy access to freeways, you know? and public transportation. I thought I'd share that with you, okay? Now, marketing and advertising. And feel free, please feel free to get a hold of us and talk to us about this, please. Uh, we're, that's what we're here for. So, let's talk about marketing and advertising and what you should expect. So, it's all about exposure. There are traditional ways of doing it. There's their internet, and I've got some tips for you also here. So the first thing I'm going to share with you, okay, I'm sorry to smile about this, but the first thing is, please do not have a realtor take pictures with their phone or their camera, unless they are a professional. And you definitely want to make sure that they know what they're doing. Look at houses that you've seen as you've searched through the internet and what you've gone, wow, that's a real nice photo. Have professional photos taken of your house. I can't stress how important that is. It is. And please, if you have pets, get them out of the picture. I, I, there, are some, there are some things I look at because I'll tell you what happens. Your house might be the perfect house for my buyer, but because of the pictures were so poor, they passed out. They passed it on. Video, uh, Gaffrey, having video done can be important if it's the right house. A good agent's going to tell you and they're going to guide you. The one thing I want to tell all of you that are watching this, would you please have a floor plan done? All right, please. And with the dimensions of the rooms, people look at that. And they look at that and they go, oh, okay, the bedroom that we're in right now is a 10 by 12. And I'm really not interested in another primary bedroom 10 by 12. But again, the pictures that you look at don't don't give any indication of the size of the rooms. A floor plan will, and I'm telling you, you want to talk about selling your house, a good floor plan, and most professional photographers, you ask them about that, they can come in. Now, there's something that's called a Matterport, where they come in, and you can get this 3D, and you can walk around the house and look at it. There are people that like it. 
but a lot of the buyers I talk to, it's confusing. It's a heart on their eyes. I'm telling you, good professional photos, a good floor plan, you got it made. All right. And a good description under each picture, guiding them from the entry of the house all the way through. I don't need 13 pictures of your backyard. Are you with me? I want to get a feel for the house. I want it to be inviting for my buyers to want to come. And that's how we set up a good listing. Signage is important. The listing, the way it is, is, is put together and put into the Northwest Multiple Listing Service. You know, agent to agent marketing is so critical. A lot of sellers don't realize that we can do what we call reverse prospecting to where the criteria that buyers have, once this goes and it syndicates through the multiple listing service that you're in and also Redfin, Zillow, all of them, what happens is people are going to start looking at it and if the, your house meets the search criteria that the buyer has established with their agent and the agents put that into the multiple listing service for a search engine, we, have access, we don't have access to that buyer, but we do get notifications that this particular agent has a client and here's the client number that this house matches what they're looking for. So we do a lot of agent to agent marketing. Open houses, not, I'll be honest with you, open houses they, in the right area, the right house can really work, but there's a, there's a way to do them. And the majority of open houses are really there for the agent to pick up a buyer for someone or the, some other house that they want to represent. I'm, it's a lead source for agents. And sometimes the agent who took your listing isn't the one that's sitting sight. They have somebody else doing it. Ah, how is that going to work? I'm sorry. That's personal opinion. So with that said, additional information, additional listing tips to consider here. You know, a rate buy down. Talk to your agent about this. Let's really, let's sell the sizzle on this. I'm not saying give, it up, give everything away, but talk about what is a rate buy down? You know, what can, you know, what could I expect as a buyer credit to give? You know, maybe you want to offer a higher commission, you know, and that's one of the things you really need to discuss with your agent. I'm going to do a segment on that about commissions. Um, I treat my, my sellers as I treat it as when I'm working with a seller, I treat their home as if it was my own. And I'm, this is not where I'm selling myself to you. I'm just saying that because I don't want to give my, I don't want to give commission away just to give it away. If it's a seller's market, I could offer a 1% commission. I'll guarantee you, huh, Jesse? Yeah. People are going to come. So why yeah. should I give 3%? Nobody's telling me that I have to. And the new changes in real estate are a benefit to not only the buyers, but also the sellers. Because it's almost expected that the seller has to pay all the commissions. Things have changed. You definitely want to talk to your agent about this. And I'm really excited about it. It's real transparency. And it should be. It's your money. Okay, so, and you don't mind paying a commission to someone who's a good agent, who's bringing a good buyer, including the agent you've hired to sell your house. Make sure they're taken care of, okay? Now, if your current loan allows it, can your, can your house be sold through an assumption? Which means, okay, you owe $340,000 and, and the interest rate on that is 2.75% in this market where someone's looking at their, their interest rate, your interest rate is 2.75, but the current interest rate is between six and a half or six, seven, seven and a half percent. That's a real, real bonus if you have that ability. Now, it does take longer for that to transpire and take place. You're looking at probably anywhere from 60 to 120 days, but there is a way to do that. And especially in a market, if you're somewhere where it's houses just aren't moving. So, if you want more information on that, give me, a, give me a call. Talk to me about it. I can give you some guidelines on what you need to do. But be as transparent as possible. Be a transparent seller. Buyers love it. They just appreciate it so much. And um, they're going to buy your house. I'll guarantee you. <laughs> so what should you expect? You should expect communication, weekly reports. I think it's exciting. When I put a listing on, I think I drive my sellers crazy because I'm watching the data. I'm making phone calls. I'm, I'm giving them updates. It's, it's your house. And to sit there and I hear so many people say, I go, how's it going for you? And they go, well, why don't you tell me? 
That should not be what you are saying. Communication, communication, communication. It's, it's critical. And let's talk about offers and six common mistakes, okay? Let's, let's do this and we'll finish up, okay? So which offer should you accept? Let's say you've got multiple offers. Down below, you see, see where it says, tell me about the buyer's agent and the lender. That's the first thing that I do. I didn't throw that up at the top of this slide. I put it at the bottom, but I want to talk about that right now. For me, when an offer comes across, the first phone call I make is I want to talk to that buyer's lender. And having been in the lending industry for 22 years, I know the questions to ask. I am not taking my client's house off the market for a buyer who isn't solid. And I'm going to make sure that they're solid, they're pre-approved, they're underwritten, they're ready to go. Now let's go back. We're going to be looking at breaking down the pricing, the price, how much earnest money, when's the closing date going to be, what's their financing and terms, are they asking, are they asking my seller to accept a contingent offer, we're going to wait, we're going to say okay, but we're going to wait for them to sell their home, and they haven't watched this workshop, they've overpriced their home, the condition isn't there, all of these things, all right, there, there's a lot to this. So a contingent offer, they want me to, they want to assume our house, okay? I, again, I want to make sure they're solid and they can. Do they have the extra money to buy out the equity? For example, you owe $350,000. I started to talk about that earlier. You owe three hundred and fifty, dollars but you're selling it for, let's say, uh, six fifty. dollars Do they have $300,000 cash? If they do, great. Let's talk about it, especially if your house isn't moving. But if houses are selling within a 30 to 40 day, 45 day period, why would you as a seller want to wait, you know, 60, 90, 180 days? You want your money, you want to get moving. Because again, you're still paying the mortgage and the utilities. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just telling you the truth. You've got to look at it from your point of view, not the buyers. Okay. Our job is to get you as much money as possible and make sure this offer that you're accepting is going to hold and it's going to close. What if they try to escalate the sales price to beat out the other competition? Well, that's great. But what happens if you've priced the house correctly and all of a sudden you've priced it at $650 and they escalate it up to $700 and the appraisal comes in at $650 and you've offered to do this and this and this, what happens there? Good agent's going to explain this to you. We, you know, are they going to give you some guarantees in case of a low appraisal? So remember, always, 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 if there's multiple offers, if there's another offer that looked good, you decided to go with offer one, let not all, offer number two know if you're interested in offering them a backup position. These are just a few of the many things, but which offer should you accept? It's really important that your agent has that conversation with the agent who's brought the buyer and also with that buyer's lender, okay? Now, one thing you should always ask for, every single time from the start all the way through the transactions, if you've lowered price or anything, you want, you want a seller's net proceeds. That should be something that you should have and it should be continual as you move pricing. So very important, it's very, very simple. You're taking the sales price, you're taking out the cost of everything and you're showing, as you can see on the very bottom, estimated net proceeds on this particular $600,000 house, you'd walk away with $275,000. Ask for a seller's net proceeds. No going into it. And I'm going to say something to everybody. What's, be what's the difference between a cash offer, a conventional offer, or finance, where the buyer's using, either they're going to pay cash or they're going to use conventional financing, FHA financing, VA financing. What's the difference? You know what the answer is? Nothing, because the bottom line is any one of those at six hundred thousand is going to give you two hundred seventy-five thousand. <laughs> For some reason, and Jesse, you've seen it too, in all the yeah. years you've been doing it, it's like somebody said, "Well, I got cash. Cash is king." Well, yeah, if you want to close at the sales price in two weeks, that is. But there might be, you know, there might be something to where. I know if I'm buying cash, I want a deal. Yeah, I want I'm, a deal. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get what I want out of it. Exactly. With the, with everything else, um, and, you know. It, 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 I just thought of something, Jess. I want to yeah. cut in before I th forget it. 
One of the things is people go, well, they're going to put 20% down. Well, they put that on the contract. Now, I'm going to share this with you. You've got somebody, two good buyers. One buyer off is going to do FHA with 3.5% down. There's a conventional offer with 3 to 5% down. And you have another offer, and VA is zero, which is, VA is a great loan. And so, all of a sudden, but you've got someone that says, we're going to put 20% down. And you go, boy, that's a strong offer. Well, let me ask you a question. You really liked that other FHA offer, and you were like, boy, we'd really like to help this couple out. But, boy, this 20% down is really sounds good. Okay. We get to the end. It's 10 days before closing, and you get a copy of the settlement statement, and all of a sudden it's showing that the buyer is not going to put 20% down. They've decided to go with 5% down and didn't notify you. You've got the moving trucks ready to go. Everything's ready to go. You see where I'm going with this? What are you going to do? Say, nope, I'm not going to sell it to you. You fibbed to me. You told me, you told me you're going to put 20% down. But the bottom line is still $275,000 you are going to get. I thought I would share with you, is it, is it wrong? Absolutely. So I'm sharing these things with you because you need to be able to look at each and every offer and know what your seller's net proceeds are. I know I went off on a tangent. I have so many stories and things I can share with you. Again, all I can say to you is keep watching our, our breakout sections. You'll get a lot from them. Okay. So with that said, let's talk about contingent offers. You've learned through this home seller workshop, part one and two, you've learned how to do it the right way. Now, let's say that you are going to be a buy, a seller who's going to try to buy on a contingent basis. If you do the things that we've been talking about and get your property ready to go and put together a pro forma, what I'm talking about there is put together a package that if I'm representing you as your listing agent, we've got all the pictures, we had everything to go. All we have to do is find the right house, go into contract, and I can push the button to put your house on the market to list and sell. And I go over and I present this complete package of CMA, beautiful photographs. I show them everything that's going on and what we've done. You've got a really good chance mm -hmm. to be able to have your offer accepted. But if you do what most people do and say, well, okay, well, I'll, I'll put my house on the market in five to six days and I'm a seller and I'm selling my home, it isn't going to happen. I don't care if there's no other offers on the table. I'm not taking my house off the market. Even though if I accept as a seller a contingent offer, there are people that can still come in and look at my house and make an offer and they could bump that buyer out. But most buyers don't know that. When it shows CT, which means contingent offer has been accepted, most people, it's like, oh, no, I, they move on. I'm sharing this with you because this is very important that you all hear and you remember that. You put the right package together with the right agent and you have got a powerful team and you can go out and you can get a house and buy a home based on a contingent offer of your house. So thought I'd share that with you. Again, if you want more information on it, let me know. Okay. Now, once you're in contract, this is something that I put together because I want you to hear this. Once you're in contract, what you need to know. So first of all, you need to know a timeline schedule for you. And you need to know the timeline schedule for the buyer. What does that mean? Once you go into mutual contract with a buyer, you have certain things that you have to take care of based on the contract and so does the buyer. And you need to watch those and you need to know what those timelines are and your agent needs to be very transparent with that. All right? From the earnest money getting into the escrow company, from the inspection that's going to be done, the appraisal, and also the introductions, the introductions to the title and escrow officers that are going to be working on your transaction. This is everybody working together now. So this is very important, these timelines, and you get the schedule and you know what's happening day in and day out during that 30, 45 day period until it closes. Okay. Now be aware, be aware that there are things that can happen that are completely out of your control. I mean, it's life. We could have an earthquake. We could, you know, buyers lose their financing. Some, maybe there's a death. I don't like to, 
talk like that, but there could be. I mean, maybe there's some inspection problems with the house that are going to delay things. You know, the appraisal comes back lower than what was agreed to. Maybe the closing date needs to be extended, but you need to get get it sold so you can close on the other house. Or your, your job is saying you've got to be somewhere on a certain date. There's so many little things that can happen. Now, listen. Think about it from a positive standpoint that if you've done all the things that I've shown you, you know, you've really looked at the lend to buyer's lender and everything, why would there be a problem? There shouldn't be, but there always could be, and you just have to keep that in mind, all right? Very important. So with that, let's talk about the six common mistakes. Number one is you're not emotionally prepared to sell your house. You're thinking about it as like, nah, nah. you know, you've got to be emotionally prepared. Number two is hiring the wrong, wrong broker. It, it, you know, you're not there to do favors for someone. This is a business transaction, whether it's your brother-in-law, your daughter, your son, whoever it is. Uh, guys, you've got to listen to me when I say this to you. <laughs> Please make sure you're hiring the right broker if you're going to do it that way. Incorrectly pricing your property. The condition isn't good. Photography is poor and there's poor advertising. These are the six common mistakes and when people say to me, why do you think my house didn't sell? This is what I look at. I, I, I dive deep, I go into this, and I find out what's going on. And I get called in on a lot of these, you know, cancels and expires. And even for sale by owners will ask, can you help me? Absolutely, that's what our job is. Now, with that, again, as I mentioned before in the first part, this is a program that is near and dear to me. It's called Homes for Heroes. It's for our military, police, fire, healthcare providers, and our educators. Whether you're currently in those fields or you've been there, you're retired, it doesn't matter. And it's also the support staff. If you fall into one of those categories and you're thinking about selling your home, I'm going to tell you go up to heroesavings.org and look into this program. We have given back. First of all, we educate. This is what I do. I love to educate. Use whoever you want. I always say that. There's no guilt feeling here. My goodness gracious. The thing is, is that I always say, love to apply for the job when you're ready to hire. But this program right here is a beautiful program for those that serve and have served. Look into it. It's a great program. There's no red tape, no strings attached. You qualify because of what you're doing or what you've done. And it's really a great program when we've given back a lot of money <laughs> to our local heroes. It's nationwide, by the way, too. Now, follow us. Follow us. We've got a lot of great things. I'm always updating the home buyer workshop. We're always updating the home seller workshop to be current with what's going on. And, you know, there's going to be breakouts. Also do one on lending, you know. So if you're, you're, you're wanting to get more information about lending and what's going on, Check that one out also, but follow us. If you like what you're getting here, and like us, subscribe. I just want to add to that. All of our information is down below in the links. We oh, have that's our digital right, business Thank cards. You. We have the Hero Homes for Heroes sign up. It's all within our business card, our, our digital business card. So feel free. You need this, just reach out. Down Find below. all of our contact information <laughs> there. Thank you. It, it, it takes the, the, the young tech savvy <laughs> to be able to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, I want to thank you so much of for everything course. you do. And I want to thank every single person who's been watching this. If you're watching this, thank you so much. And if you want to talk, if you want us to do a, a market analysis or anything like that, just down below, there's our contact information. As Jess said, reach out to us. And with that said, thank you very much and much success.